So we move on to our good friend uh, Josip Skeo from Croatia. Josip, ah, there he is. Hi to Hello. all of you. Good afternoon. You can share your screen with us. Yes, let me know if you see it. Yes, this is okay. Perfect. Go ahead. So I'm going to speak about biogeography of the Adriatic Orthoptera and I'm presenting on behalf of our small team, which is made up of Anton Jelincic, he's a botanist, so he's helping us with plants and with uh, plant communities. And then there are my students who are now already either searching for a job or employed. There are Carmela Adic, Max Deranja, Marko Pavlovic, and Maja Mihaljevic. Then we have a collaborator from Malaysia, University of Malaya, it's Amira Akila Binti Muhammad. And my dear colleague, Fran Revrina, you are going to hear him later. So I'm going in this lecture to shortly introduce you uh, how Adriatic Sea looks today, how it looked in the past, and what is important for interpretation of biogeography in the area. And then I will put some emphasis on, dry, on drying and flooding in the area which shaped species distributions today. And then I will jump shortly on characteristic species and some species assemblages. I will compare the Apennine Peninsula to Balkan Peninsula and some functional groups. Then I will shortly touch our analysis, how we explain distribution patterns still now and what we did and what needs to be done. And here, the most interesting thing is timing of divergences on each island. Yesterday, there was an interesting lecture on Crete and I hope you will find Adriatic area also interesting for uh, future research. I will not speak for a long time because in the Adriatic region we know that coffee is important. So I will make, maybe make a lecture a bit shorter than expected. So this is the region of the Adriatic Sea. Also in, we can include Ionian Sea in the south, it's all somewhat connected. And here we see Italian coast in the west and in the north, also Slovenian coast, and then Croatian coast in the east, Montenegrin coast and Albanian coast. You will find a lot of islands, there are more than uh, 1,000 of them, islands, islets and other uh, small phenomena in the sea. And the smallest ones, which are like, let's say, a few meters square, large or a few hundred meters, you will often find no grasshopper species. But on the larger ones, you will find interesting communities and then you can compare islands that are close to the uh, sea, uh, to the coast and islands that are far from the coast. If we look at Adriatic Sea, it's not only islands and bare rock, however, this bare rock and nakis is dominant type of habitat, so most species will be some stone specialists if we can call them specialists because everything is stone here. So uh, for, for us, uh, let's say other species are more specialized if we compare whole community. Uh, other than stone and rocks, you have um, a lot of mountains with many microhabitats such as swamps, uh, forests, uh, small hills, uh, different types of fields. Maybe most interesting type is uh, karst fields or also known as karst polje. Polje is a Slavic word for field and it's a dominant word when speaking about a karst geomorphology. And then we have many rivers, caves, streams, everything. So you can expect a huge diversity in almost all the genera that are present outside of the Balkans and uh, the Upper Peninsula. But also you can expect to find many endemic species some of them are shown here. It's Ramehippus dinaricus, uh, one species endemic to the dinaric Alps, also Primotropis hystrix. It's a large one, so maybe this one is uh, more famous across the Europe. When we compare the Adriatic Sea today and in the past, we can see that there were huge differences. In some moments, Adriatic Sea didn't exist at all. It was a huge valley. And then in some moments in that valley, there was forest. In other moments, it was just flooding plain. But for us, uh, what is interesting is when did Adriatic Sea become 
plain and when did it become C. Here I marked some of the main events. So 34 million years ago, uh, there was a formation of Paratetis Ocean. And then after the formation of Paratetis, you can see here this Balkan Anatolian unit being a special biogeographic unit. And this is probably the place of origin of many genera, such as Isophia, Epicillimon, Leptophias, and so on, which we observe today. And also when we look some molecular phylogenies, we can see that this 35 million years ago, up to 50 million years ago, is the time of divergence of subfamilies or genera. So yes, this is the moment in which ancestors of, let's say, Zofia were, was only one population of one species that was short-lived. And then here, we can see further as we go, we can see that from time to time it was connected to Central Europe or it was connected to Asia or disconnected from Asia and six million years ago, it was Messinian crisis. The whole Adriatic was a valley, a plain, and this is the time when we can expect that a lot of species also inhabited this valley. And after the sea came again, the sea level rose, this valley disappeared, and then it separated the two populations of one species that live in the valley, one is Apennine population, and the other is Balkan population. And today we observe this. The last glaciation was some 18,000 years ago. And during this glaciation, we can see that this Adriatic Valley, also known as Po River Valley, Po River is this river in Italy. And this valley was huge. Adriatic Sea was very small sea that was uh, only present in today deepest parts and this is southern adriatic while all the other parts were mainland so this was again a bridge for many taxa to cross so we observe many taxa which have eastern and western population just because of this separation but also we can observe some endemic and relic taxa such as traineriana marmorata which are present in the remains of this poor river valley and which are probably in the past widespread in this Adriatic basin. As you can see already, drying and flooding are the main events that shaped the Adriatic because all the islands that we see today were one steps of the mountains. So one large mountain that was from Italy to let's say southern Croatia and it was connected before sea was present. When sea changed, the whole level arose let's say 200 meters or 100 or so and then all of this valley became flooded by sea and sea is not inhabitable by grasshoppers. So this connection was lost and then this loss of connection brought a lot of isolation because there are many islands, some are older and some originated more recently, they were cut from the mainland. So you have all the types of endemic genera, species, subspecies, everything. Some of the interesting are species of the genus Epachromius, for example, Epachromius cerulipes and Epachromius tergestinus, which today we found them next to some swamps in northern Adriatic, but we can Think of them as of relic taxa, which probably witnessed the formation of the Adriatic Sea. And just like Trineriana and Marmorata, they were probably widespread in the past, but when sea level rose, their microhabitats became very rare. One example of uh, such isolated uh, locality is island of Susak. It's situated here next to Stres and Lofin. And it's a very small island, only a few kilometers square. When you come there, you find only a few species of, of uh, grasshoppers because of a lot of evolutionary constraints present there. So you don't find any uh, specialized taxa, unfortunately. The whole island is made of sand, which is not uh, typical in the Adriatic. Most of islands are made of rock. There are sediment, and few of them you have uh, made of magmatic rocks, such as Yabuka Island, which is just uh, between Italy and Croatia. And it has some endemic subspecies of lizard, for example, or endemic species of plants, but no endemic uh, grasshoppers, at least for now. This island of Susak 
is taught to originate from poor river sand. So you can see that we have today remote island in the Adriatic made completely out of sand, which we explain its origin. One of the explanation is sand that was brought by poor river in the past. The other hypothesis is that it was wind, that the wind brought this sand from Sahara Desert. Uh, this sand is not so similar to Sahara Desert, but in Croatia we have in the south, for example, in Yet Island, we have a whole coast made of sand from Sahara Desert because a microclimate makes those winds to stop and then this sand uh, precipitates, is that, yeah, per precipitates in, in this coast and then you have special localities for, for example, Acrotilus longipes. The most interesting taxa for biogeography are, of course, short wing taxa, because in short wing taxa mostly we can exclude recent transportation or uh, some event by which they came to the locality and then became spread like in Here we have some examples is Modestana, Modesta, for example, or genus Odontopadisma, which has a lot of endemic species. <coughs> Uh, Dragan Trubano is <coughs> working <coughs> on Barbitistini and also on their phylogeny. There are a few interesting papers. I find them interesting. I hope you will find them as well. So what is interesting that in Fangeropteride you have several origins of uh, short wings or several losses of long-winged form. So you can conclude that, for example, James Petzilimon or Isofia had also a uh, short wing dance story. It was not a recent loss. Those genera are very interesting because by, with them you can say a lot of, about biogeography if you do molecular studies by uh, microsatellites or so. And then you can conclude when certain populations originated in some islands or mountains. Why short wings represent advantage? Well, you can read also a lot of papers about this, but here I just proposed one scenario that was uh, probably common after the last ice age or during the last ice age, when you have stable environment, for example, for Tetrix transylvanica, and you have Brachypter species that is not flying around, it just survives in this stable environment. If it's flying around, then what happens is all of the specimens, uh, they die because it's too cold and everything else is frozen except that small locality where those Brachypterus taxa originated. For Macropterus taxa, you have uh, many recent colonizations. For example, our unpublished data say that Paratetics meridionalis in, in, the whole Adria, in the whole Mediterranean represents one or only Two haplogroups, so probably in all the islands it came very recently. Interesting for biogeography are also those distinct uh, distributions that are fragmented between, for example, north and south, like we have here for Barbutistas Ochkai, or east and west. Here, when it's east and west, we can think that those separation, those divergences happen because of sea level rising and then the sea level cut to populations. In some cases, we can also expect that some tech safe, we have one small population of something that it came recently by transport or by birds or however. Here are some of the comparison of endemic taxa that you can find in Apennine or Italy or Italian peninsula, and you can find in Balkan peninsula for no taxa from here, we know exactly the type of divergence. So all of those models, for me, I hope it will be for you as well, represent very interesting evolutionary models, which, which are worth paying attention to. So we have, for example, Acrometopa macropoda in the Balkans. In Italy, there is Acrometopa italica, also in Tetigonia. There is Tetigonia silana on one side. On the other side, there is Tetigonia uh, Balkanica. Some recent divergences. Yosip, 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 yeah? you have two minutes. Okay. Some recent divergences. We are in Euphalodoptera or in Racoclase, where you have species complexes or species that were, could be also regarded as subspecies. But you can find also 
and then genera such as Ita Hippus or Rami Hippus that were probably separated much before. This all happens, I will just uh, conclude because we have so many microhabitats. So from Pseudomogoplistes habitat here next to the coast in one image and some, I don't know, Tilopsis habitat, all to Ramehippus and Primatropis habitat in the mountain. So this one, in this one figure, probably you could find 100 uh, grasshopper species. We did some preliminary analysis. We included Greece, we included Croatia and Italy just to see what is happening. And for now, we see that there are few regions that can be separated. This is just zero one analysis. It is very simple. We just look if species is present on one mountain if, or if it's not, and then we do principal component analysis. This, I would like to have more detailed data also for other countries and other localities to include them. And in the end, time and divergences would be very interesting for all the species, as I said, and all the genera, but we don't have research to research Arthrogophilus, where we have Cavicola and Andreini, which recently inhabited the Upper Peninsula from the Balkans. And we have Euphordoptera, which separated because of rising sea level. Which are young, which are old, and which are the oldest would be interesting. And as we saw in Crete, where you have 11 species of Euphordoptera, which probably originated in different islands. And then when Crete originated again, it's one island fused you have one island with many endemic species, which is in by geography acting like a whole archipelago. You see here, Crete is very far away in the analysis from all the other places. New data are coming from Orthoptera species file projects, grasshoppers and creepers of the Adriatic Islands. And here, see, here you can see Amira, Marco, Max, and Carmela, who are like machine for gaining new data. And they're also searching for new jobs. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry if I was a few minutes too long. I hope this will bring your attention to the Adriatic. Cheers. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. I think there's mm -hmm. time for one question. Mm -hmm. Hello, Armin Landmann, Innsbruck. Maybe I got something wrong at the start of your talk. You mentioned that the, most of the typical species of the uh, Adriatic Islands are bound to bare rocks and karst habitats. So I just wanted, following the, the ice ages in the early Holocene, there were a few uh, climate warming phases. And as we all know, most Adriatic uh, Islands were deeply forested until the Greek and the, and, and the Romans especially then deforested the area. So would you know whether there are some island refuges for such species uh, in, in the, on the top of the mountains where never have been uh, uh, deep, uh, densely forested areas or, or is there something to be yeah, declared? We have, a, we have a few uh, old forests on the islands and we do a lot of research on those very islands in order to see what was the ancestral uh, Orthoptera community in the Adriatic. Unfortunately, we have just few islands like Hvar, Brach, and there is one forest on Rab Island. Most of other islands, as you said, are deforestated. And now bot uh, botanical people, botanists, are doing also research. When did this happen? Now they found that there are indeed some populations, for example, of Pinus halapensis, that could be uh, native to the Adriatic, as we have also Pinus spinea in the south, few localities. So in the future, it would be really interesting to connect those refugial localities, which you said, in the islands, they are fewer than in the mountains. In the mountains, we have many, many refugia because you have beach forests and uh, a huge grasslands that are probably from uh, last glacial age. Okay, thank you very much. And see thank you, you next time. See Bye -bye. you next time in person. <laughs>